Well, welcome everyone uh, to our Safer Road by Design webinar uh, for today. Um, it will be probably our last one before the, the SOT meeting in a couple of weeks. So I hope we'll see some of you there. Um, and the webinar today is um, is continuing our series we're having with Nathan Stockman uh, from Eurosafe with a focus on uh, risk assessment issues, uh, practical ones in the cosmetics industry. And this is the uh, third one today. Um, and we're going to cover the topic of uh, how do we go about assessing um, mixtures of essential oils. So with that, I hand over to you, Natan. Just reminding everyone at the end, of course, there'll be time for questions uh, in the question box and discussion um, after we get through the presentation. So with that, I hand over to you, Natal. Thank you, Barry, and welcome everyone to this uh, webinar. Uh, so today is the third of our series, and we will talk about uh, essential oils, as Barry said, and how to ensure the safety of a mixture of essential oils. And to begin, just a few words about uh, Eurosafe and what we do in Eurosafe. Uh, we work uh, mainly on cosmetic products and we are able to, to be with you uh, all the way of the development process of your cosmetic product. Uh, as well as in the ingredient part for hazard testing, toxicological profile making and writing, and for the finished product, the risk testing, the European regulatory safety, of course, and uh, we will uh, focus on uh, evolution and updates. Um, we have three main services uh, at Eurosafe. Uh, in vitro tests, test on volunteers, and the, the part we present today is about regulatory toxicology. So we are with you at each step uh, during this uh, development process of the product. And to talk about safety assessment, uh, we work for big and small players, for CDMOs and for cosmetic brands and it represents um, more than uh, one formula a year in terms of uh, safety assessment and you can see here some of uh, our main uh, customers for safety assessment services but today today we are talking about uh, essential oils and why we are talking about uh, this specific natural product because uh, they have become popular over the last few years and they are used in many, many types of products. And today we focus, of course, on cosmetics products. And uh, why talking about mixture of essential oils? Because uh, in cosmetic products, we, we found products generally really close related to aromatherapy uh, that includes several essential oils as a mixture. So it's a huge issue to, to do a safety assessment of such a mixture. And, and uh, we'll discuss about this today because the, the goal of this webinar is to determine ways to assess the safety of product containing essential oil and or a mixture of uh, essential oils. So we, we begin with uh, a definition, of course, of uh, what is uh, an essential oil. And you can see in the slide the definition provided by the AFSAPS in 2008. Um, it's a fragrance product, generally, uh, complex composition and obtained for a botanical defined plant raw material by different methods. And you can see on the left of the slides, the steam distillation process. 
that make you essential oil at the end. And in the right uh, corner, you can see the cold press process uh, used mainly for uh, citrus fruits, but uh, but uh, just mainly not uh, not limited to the citrus. Um, and in fact, in chemical terms, uh, essential oils is a complex mixture um, with a large number of components. For example, you have here on the slide the rosemary oil from Rosemarinus officinalis. Uh, it's, uh, it's just um, the chromatogram. Uh, obtained by the gas chromatography and you can see that you have a lot of compounds represent your entire essential oils but it's not limited to the large number of components with an essential oils you also have a large number of variation of natural variations and you could have both types um, you could have nature natural variation uh, depending of the nature of the essential oils of the botanical species subspecies chemotypes etc it's used uh, it's uh, linked to the vegetal part of the essential oils and visit and you could also have a natural variation um, depending on the part of the plants you use to obtain an essential oils obviously you don't have the the same components when you use leaves from uh, trees to obtain uh, essential oils uh, then uh, you use um, the root of the same tree you don't we you will don't have the, the same um, composition uh, and and this is uh, depending on the nature of the essential oil but the variation are not limited to the nature you could also have um, different conditions that will impact your complex composition uh, you could have some uh, location variation depending on where uh, your plant and your raw material is cultivated um, the way of culture the type of the soil the harvesting method or even the meteor logical condition could have an impact on your composition so you have a mixture of a large component with a lot of possible natural variation so by telling that you could um, obviously represent uh, easily represent that with this two type of variation you could have a, a huge is, issue to to do safety assessment with essential oils and this way is available for one essential oil but when you have a mixture of essential oil in fact you have a mixture of complex mixtures Obviously, you can have an addition of components you can find in different essential oils. Here on the slide, you can see close related essential oil. You have the eucalyptus globulus and the medaloca. It's a, in fact the miaoli oil. I, I choose close related essential oils uh, on purpose to show you that you can have. Um, an addition of component here you can see the eucalyptus the alpha pinene the paracimen uh, and the limonene just for the example um, if you put on your cosmetic products a mixture of these two essential oils you can have 
in safety terms, he can have, he should have. They should evaluate the, the eucalyptal, the total eucalyptal, not just the one from the eucalyptus globulus and the other from the nearly. You must evaluate it, you must assess both of the eucalyptal you can find in your product. So you can have component similar component and on the other hand you also can have different components that you just found in one of the essential oil and not in the other one here you can see some uh, aromadomrene or globular variety floral and so on and it represents the large spectrum you can have uh, in terms of components by mixing different essential oil with their own specific composition. Here, uh, we are just on specification. You can see range of concentration for each component, uh, just for the example, but of course you have all the variation we just saw on each essential oil. So, so again, you can measure easily the, the complexity of the of the assessment of the safety here so what can we use to to ensure the safety of such a mixture you in, in fact we will use a combination of different arguments we have both parts the first one is uh, the toxicological data we have directly on the essential oils and on the other hand, we combine this data with data we have on their specific components to ensure safety. Both parts are representing, are useful to assess the safety of the mixture of essential oil. We can use both of them. So if I try to represent the safety process uh, we can use it it would be just like you seen here uh, in the slide uh, and we have for this four main steps to to assess the safety of a mixture of an of essential oil sorry so the first step is to maximize the composition because as we just saw you have variation, you have different concentration of different components depending on a lot of natural variations. So the first step is to maximize the composition to, to be sure that uh, when you do the calculation later, uh, you will do with uh, the maximal risk you can have. Either way, we do we do safety in fact, and we do safety assessment in fact for for each ingredient. So it's not uh, discovering here. The second step is uh, the margin of safety calculation on each essential oils, and it just follows by the third step is uh, when you don't have such toxicological data for margin of safety calculation, you can use other arguments and other data you have to, to be sure uh, that your essential oil is safe. And the, so bo both steps are, are really close. You can first look after the toxicological profile and if you have a toxicological data, you can do a calculation of the margin of safety. But when you don't have such toxicological data, you use every every other data you have. Um, and the fourth step is uh, the component approach is to calculate the margin of safety on each component of each essential oils, of course, with the addition uh, we just saw uh, uh, in the example. So. The first step is the maximization of the composition. And, and why, why we do that uh, is to spread the natural variation, to 
to pass away and to, to, to really maximize the risk assessment uh, we would do. So uh, why, uh, how, how we can do that uh, using specification, uh, as we just saw, using multiple analysis, using a certificate of analysis and so on and so on. Here you can see um, the combination of data we can use for uh, the pelargonium gravelans for geranium oil. Uh, you have in the left uh, the specification and in the right the certificate of analysis and the, the chromatogram, the total chromatogram that we have for the associational oils. And of course, we, we will mix both of uh, this analysis to, to have a maximization, a maximal composition. Uh, of course, this uh, maximal composition is uh, more than 100%. And with that, we can do uh, the four step, uh, the calculation on, of margin of safety on each component. But before that, we have the uh, the second and third steps, and uh, as uh, as I said, uh, we we'll look for pivotal toxicological value uh, for a marginal safety calculation, and we use uh, any other data we have when we don't have uh, pivotal toxicological value. So we can use in silico data, in vitro, in vivo data, human consumption data, and so on. Just just. Uh, we really use uh, every every argument we have to 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 ensure the safety in the literature. So it means that you must have the complete toxicological profile of each essential oil to, to do that. And after that, we can do the constituted approach and the, the fourth steps, uh, then last steps. Of, um, of our assessment. And it's, of course, depending on the first one, so of the maximization of the maximal composition, more than 100%, of course. And after that, for each component, uh, we will estimate the dermal absorption, of course, because we are going to calculate margin of safety. We, we must have the dermal absorption. And for every component in each Asian cell oils, in the maximal composition, we look for pivotal toxicological value. And if we have one, we can just do the calculation of the margin of safety. Of course, with when we have the exposure of the finished product. But Sometimes we don't have any pivotal toxicological value uh, for each component. For, for some components, we don't have such data. So when we don't have, we can use read across approach or we can try to group chemical by category and use a category value to, again, to, to use it and calculate a margin of safety. But again, sometimes we don't have such such data. So when we don't have any any data for the margin of safety calculation, we can use the threshold of toxicological concern uh, depending on uh, the Kramer classes of each component. Uh, you can use it only only when you don't have any other data for for the, the margin of safety calculation so with this process with this constituent approach you can have all margin of safety for all components in your maximal composition of your mixture of essential oils and with the other the two other steps the Margin of safety on each essential oil and the arguments of each essential oil, we, could, we can have a triptych, some, some triptych to, to answer the safety. And I will now just show you uh, an example of 
each step and what we can do uh, to, to ensure safety. Uh, here, j just to save time to this webinar, I don't explain to you what we do with when we have genotoxicity alert and why and how, sorry, how we include this different safety factors in our margin of safety calculation because we don't have uh, enough time to, to explain you each case. But in fact, uh, it's the same rules like for, just, just like for other ingredients, we, we apply uh, the rules uh, that we use for every ingredient in terms of toxicological assessment. So it, we, it's classical approach for even for genotoxicity alert of for the different safety factors. Just two words about the exposure because you we do a margin of safety calculation. We need the product, the finished product exposure. Uh, you can use data from the exposure study in the literature, but um, in many, many cases, uh, specifically when you are close to aromatherapy, you don't have such data, such exposure data in the literature. So you need to do a specific determination depending on your finished product. So, I don't have a um, specific rule uh, about this, but, but uh, I think it's really important to discuss with your safety assessor uh, about that because uh, the determination of the exposure is a key point in the margin of safety calculation. Just a word. I talk about uh, product closeability to aromatherapy. Please be careful with the, these borderline products and please ensure to stay in the cosmetic domain because, uh, because uh, if we don't be here, we can't do uh, such a safety assessment or it depends on, on other, other things. And here we we have the the example. Uh, I I choose um, an aptosan product with a mixture of six essential oil ju just to show you uh, what we can do uh, and to give you a practical uh, safety assessment. We can do, of course, is a effective product uh, here. So you have just here the the exposure data we will use. Uh, here we have data from the literature. And here, uh, just for this example, you can see the mixture of essential oil we will use. About, it's about six different essential oils, uh, and it represents almost uh, 3% of the total formation of the product. Again, it's just a fictive product uh, to, to show you uh, the, the, these examples. So, as you remember, the first step is to determine the composition and the maximal composition. Uh, we can use all the data we have in each essential on each essential oils, chromatogram, specification certificate of analysis, etc., etc., just to have the maximum percentage of each component. Here we have ju just, you can see so, some data we have uh, on each essential oil, ju just to show you uh, what we can use. And the second step, as you remember again, is the margin of safety calculation for each essential oils. And here you can see we have data and pivotal toxicological data on three different essential oils. Uh, uh, again, I don't uh, enter into details for the safety factor we, we, we use just to show you uh, such margin of safety calculation and what we can do about that. Uh, 
so we have three essential oils, three essential oils with toxicological value, and you can perform a margin of safety calculation for, for this three for this one. For the other three essential oils, uh, we can use other arguments. Here you can see uh, some summary of the entire toxicological profile. Of course, you need to have the, the entire one, uh, but, uh, but just to show you today, I can uh, I bring just summary of the main arguments you can use to to ensure the, the safety of each essential oil. Again, we don't work on the mixture here because our first step is, is to work on each essential oil. And, and after that, here you can see the last step we have uh, about the constituent approach. Of course, it's just an extract of the complete table. So you just have a few components here, the entire table, uh, not enter into, <laughs> into the slide, of course. Uh, you can see that we perform a margin of safety calculation on each component with the maximal composition and with the maximum percentage of each component determined in the step one, as we've seen. And uh, you can see that the entire composition represents uh, more than 100%, in fact, uh, 125%. Uh, you can see also that we perform uh, an estimation of the cutaneous absorption, and we apply the toxicological value we have, or the threshold of toxicological concern on each component. Again, I will not detail the safety factor we use, but uh, they are just included in the, the tox value. They are taking into account uh, in the tox value uh, just to, to have margin of safety, uh, target margin of safety of one. Uh, and not to 100, or we just include the safety factor in the in the tox value. Um, you can see here also that we have some color is um, is a grouped tox value. It's a grouped approach, in fact. So for the citral value or for the different pinin we have, you can use the a category approach and calculate a grouped margin of safety. Uh, not we will not take into account uh, the line on the delta trocaren of the sabinen. You can see here we not take into account each line, but we use the global line in the bottom of the table on the group tox value used for group margin of safety calculation. It depends, of course, of the tox value you have. And that's the way we, we use the category approach uh, and the read across approach. Also, because when you use read across and when we when you have uh, both components, uh, both uh, close related components uh, for margin of safety calculation, we use uh, a group a group calculator. So with this example, we will ensure each step we do maximization of the composition. Of course, uh, we see that each margin of safety of, on each essential oil is clear. So uh, we have the three essential oils here, so all is clear. We also have uh, for the other three essential oils, we have arguments on each one. And 
as you can see, uh, as we just saw in the table, in the last table, in the last slide, uh, we, we also have clear margin of safety for each component. So with all the steps performed, we can, we are able to say that the safety, the safety of our mixture of essential oil is, is clear. Uh, uh, there is n no risk is expected with this safety. Of course, here we just talk about. Uh, sorry, I don't found my word. Um, we just talk about uh, the, the global toxicity and not uh, specific toxicology. Uh, I think uh, mainly about the sorry the sensitization process. Uh, but in fact, for this sensitization process, we are about to do the same approach, uh, not with a, a global value, global pivotal toxicological value. But uh, but uh, sensitization value, we, we can use it to, to do again a margin of safety calculation just on the sensitization part. Of course, uh, this method uh, have limitation. It's not a perfect one, but uh, but uh, we use it on a case by case basis, and, and it gives you really many arguments and many, many uh, ways to, to, to prove that your, your safety, your, the safety of the mixture of the essential oils. But of course, we, you will do and we may do um, this assessment on a case by case basis because each mixture of essential oil is different when you just modify uh, just a little percentage in your mixture uh, you modify the, the margin of safety calculation so you can't you can't use uh, a cal a calculation of a presumption of safety for one mixture to another if they are not really really close you can you must do uh, again, the margin of safety calculation for your new mixture. Um, another limitation is that we use a, a MOX approach. Um, it, it's, um, it's a new world and you, I think you heard about this. Uh, it's a, you can hear this uh, on the CLP regulation update. Uh, here we just we not just use the MOX approach, we combine the MOX approach, the constituent approach, with the data we have on each essential oil. And, and it's, it's really important to, to have both, both steps, to, to have the data on each essential oil and to have, on the other hand, the data on each constituent. Uh, we think that we can't have, uh, uh, we can't perform really the safety of a mixture of an essential oil just when we look on the different constituents. Um, recently, we we saw some um, some studies, some in the literature to show that an essential oil, uh, a complete essential oil have not the same uh, profile that uh, each component